Hi, my name is Lexi. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something I've wanted to do ever since I started YouTube and it has just taken me this long to do it. But I thought this would be a really good time to do this because I know that the new year is coming up and a lot of people are probably doing research and considering fasting, maybe alternate day fasting. And so I thought this would be helpful to do a pros and cons video just to help you kind of know what you're getting into. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list. Obviously there's more to it. And if you have anything to add, please do add that in the comments below. Um, also, I wanted to mention that my normal weekly update as far as uh, weight and stuff like that, I'm going to just push to next week and do like a two week recap. Um, so you can look for that there. And so going ahead and getting started, I'm going to start with the cons because I feel like we should get the bad stuff out of the way. Uh, but just keep in mind, I have been doing this for 15 months now. So I started September 17th, 2019. This will be going up December 17th, 2020. So that is 15 months. So I have learned a lot and I've reflected over that time what I, you know, think, what are the pros and cons. And so this is what I think. Um, and just as a side note, as I start, obviously I've been doing this a long time. So none of these cons were enough for me to quit. So keep that in mind and I will try to keep them positive and sort of like cushion them with uh, a little bit of maybe helpful hints or tips with those things. So number one is uh, you're not going to be eating for a day. So this is probably the most obvious thing, but obviously this is one of the most hard things for people to get over. Um, you're going to occasionally be missing out on eating with other people or eating what you want, or, you know, you're going to have to break that routine of, you know, every day waking up and eating at this time, this time, this time, every day, uh, that is going to have to change. And it does take some getting used to, but you do get used to it. I will say that, um, it really has a lot to do with mindset and just creating those habits. And when you get, more and more used to it, you will be able to do it easier. Now, number two, also another obvious one is hunger. Okay, so when you are doing any type of fasting and your body is not used to it, you are going to feel hungry. Um, your body is asking you to put more glucose into it to refill those glycogen stores and you're going to feel it. Also, there is responses in your body that are just, you have this habit of eating and so your body reminds you, hey, it's time to eat. So there's different types of hunger um, and you're gonna feel all of those different types of hunger. The good thing is, is that hunger does not get worse and worse and worse. Hunger is not an emergency. Uh, no one ever died from being hungry. Yes, people have died from malnutrition and uh, having absolutely no food in, in them at all. But that is not the problem for most of us who come to intermittent fasting. Um, we have plenty of stores on our body that we can use. And so hunger is not going to kill you and it comes in waves. So, you know, you feel it coming, it builds, and then it goes away. So that's the good thing. And you really do it gets better over time. It is the worst as you're adjusting to the lifestyle. Um, but yeah, it gets better over time and it never gets worse. You're not going to die from being hungry. I promise. Um, number three is possible headaches. So I have not had a ton of headaches. The only headaches that I've had, I'm positive are not fasting related because I, you know, I've had a bad headache starting in the morning of a fast. And so it wasn't like after the full day, I do get twinges of headaches every now and then. Usually it's from like an electrolyte imbalance. And for me, um, just a little pinch of 
sea of salt. This is the pink Himalayan salt. I get this from Costco, but this helps me a lot and just kind of gets me through. I just um, sprinkle a little bit in my hand and lick it off, like really simple. I don't measure it. I just use it as I feel like I need it. Um, you can also take electrolytes, um, supplements, magnesium, potassium. Uh, you'll just have to kind of experiment with that, but just know that the headaches are usually the worst like in the first couple of weeks as you're adjusting. Okay, number four is digestive issues. Um, so with this, I would say that the hardest parts are breaking your fast. You just have to experiment and see what works for you as far as breaking your fast. I have found that breaking my fast with nuts works really well. For others, that doesn't work. In fact, Dr. Fung and um, Megan Ramos, they work together. Um, they say not to break your fast with nuts or eggs, and those both work really well for me. So you just have to experiment with that. Sometimes though, it can, if you break your fast in a way that doesn't work well for you, you may find yourself running to the bathroom. And the other problem comes with adjusting to basically your stomach capacity. You may overeat on your eating days initially because you know, you're just not used to the lower uh, amount that you can eat. And so you may get sick one way or the other because of that. I did have that happen uh, a few times in the beginning. Still, occasionally it'll happen to me if I overdo it on an eating day, but I've learned to adjust to that so it doesn't happen as often. Number five is that some people may not get it. Okay, so as far as whether or not you should tell people, that's totally up to you. I think that eventually the people in your immediate family are going to find out. And the way that I handle this is I try to engage in these conversations as little as possible unless I feel like they want information. Um, I haven't had a lot of like backlash from this. I've had a few comments about like starving yourself or whatever. And this just comes from people not being fully educated on intermittent fasting. So I think the best thing to, the way to approach someone who may be badgering you about it and, you know, or who may be truly worried about you and your health is to point them to the research and the information. The best two that I could suggest are um, Fast Feast Repeat by Jim Stevens and The Obesity Code by Jason Fung. These are both awesome. I actually prefer this one the most. I have these both linked below always. Um, this has probably the most up-to-date, comprehensive, easy to digest information on fasting, but some people may prefer this just because of the credentials of Jason Fung, being that he is a nephrologist, so he's, you know, a medical doctor, and some people may need to read something from a doctor to be convinced. Whereas Jen Stevens is a retired teacher. She's very intelligent and has put together all of the information, has tons of experience with herself and thousands of other intermittent fasters. But you know, it just depends on what you think will appeal more to the person. But that's what I would do is just point them to the information. And um, beyond that, you just kind of have to say, it works for me. I understand if it, you know, it's not something you're interested in, but you know, uh, number six is low energy sometimes. Okay, so with fasting, what I find is that this really varies. Um, sometimes I will have a ton of energy and sometimes I will be low energy. I'm typically lower energy in the afternoon of a fasting day. Um, and I guess I haven't really worried about that too much just because before I was fasting, I always, always, well, I kind of always had low energy, but especially in the afternoon, that was like very typical for me. So um, my energy is definitely overall better 
but I will have that dip in the afternoon. And I believe that that is the time where my body is switching from, you know, sugar burning to fat burning. So, um, that's just a theory, but that's what my experience has been. So I just kind of take it easy in the afternoon. If I can, I squeeze in a little 10 minute nap or something. Um, and I just adjust to it. The number seven is possible sleep disturbance. Now I have been lucky in that alternate day fasting has not really affected my sleep too much. The only thing that I have a problem with or that I feel like affects me is that sometimes I wake up a lot earlier um, the day after a full fast. So I may naturally wake up at like 5.30 or 6, whereas I would naturally wake up at 7 normally. And I actually find this to be a benefit because I get up and I get going and get on with my day quicker. So I appreciate that and don't find it to be too much of a con, but I know that a lot of people have a really hard time sleeping with alternate day fasting. Um, the two things that help the most with that are possibly a magnesium supplement, um, or for some people, they find that doing the 500 calorie meal on their fasting day helps them to sleep. And it may just be that this is like an adjustment thing where you don't sleep well for like the first few weeks or month and then eventually your body, you know, figures it out and can sleep again. You just kind of have to experiment with that. Number eight is, this is a con and a pro, um, is that you can't use food for comfort. Okay, and this, I do think this is more of a pro than a con, but it does feel like a con at first. You might feel really frustrated because you're having a hard day. You just want to go, you know, go to the bag of chocolate chips. Yeah, that's me. I totally rated the chocolate chips all the time. Number nine is that the day feels long. I don't know what it is, but eating somehow just breaks up the day and makes it kind of flow and feel like it goes by quicker. But when you are not eating for a full day, the day just feels so long. Um, and I know that in the beginning, especially that is the case. So what I recommend, especially in the beginning is to think of things that you enjoy that you can do on your fasting day. And also I really found that in my first couple of weeks, that writing in a journal really helped me when I felt just like, you know, antsy and this was just dragging and I wanted to eat, um, to write down my feelings and my thoughts and why I was doing this and all of that just really helped me to put it in perspective and to stay motivated and stay the course. So that is my suggestion for the long day. It's just to do things you enjoy, stay busy, uh, give yourself rest though when you need it and to write in a journal. Okay, uh, number 10 is too much food and leftovers. Okay, this is like one of the hardest things for me still is that uh, when I make food and there's leftovers and the kids won't eat the leftovers and I'm not eating the leftovers and they're sitting in the fridge you know, going bad. And then it, sometimes they pile up and I can't get to all of them on my eating days. Um, this has been really hard for me because I hate wasting food. And so I've gotten better at like managing the flow and just uh, forcing my family to eat leftovers, but uh, it is hard. And I, um, I'm still trying to figure that out. It's one of the things that is still hard for me. I just, I really hate wasting food and so I don't like that. Number 11 are weight fluctuations. Okay, so when you're doing alternate day fasting, especially versus a daily window, you're gonna have a lot of weight fluctuations and when you're doing 4-3 like me, because I do uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is my typical fasting schedule, and I have Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday are my eating days. So after the weekend, my Saturday and Sunday eating days, my weight will be up the highest on Monday. 
And then after my fasting day on Monday, it'll go down. And then after uh, Tuesday, each day will go up a little bit. Then, you know, so you do follow like a pretty consistent pattern of your weight going up and down, but you're not going to see every day a loss. Um, some people do, I guess, if they have like a lot to lose and their body is just responding that way. But for most people, you're going to have, you know, that up and down pattern with your weight, just like you are with your eating. So that can be kind of challenging to deal with mentally, just those fluctuations on the scale. Now you have two options with this. You can just make peace with it, which is kind of what I've done. I weigh almost daily and I just accept those fluctuations, see them for what they are. You can do that or you can not weigh at all and you can use other measurements to mark your progress. I do recommend using some form of measurement to mark your progress, whether it is uh, you know, measuring with the tape measure, your waist and your thighs and all that, or taking pictures on a regular, I do recommend taking pictures. Like please do take before pictures and along the way take pictures. Cause that's like one of the easiest, best ways to mark your progress. Um, but anyway, so that's one way you can deal with that is uh, just to, you know, you either accept it or you throw it away completely and use other ways to measure your progress. The last, con is that you are going to get cold at least most people do i do the only time that i did not feel cold on fasting days was this past summer here where i live it's consistently over 100 degrees every day and that was the only time that i did not feel cold but once it started to turn to fall and winter again uh i'm freezing again so the best thing you can do here is just to layer up, get a blanket, you know, you just, you're going to be cold. It's a good thing. Uh, there's a video, I think it's Thomas DeLauer has a video on why, uh, why you get cold when you're fasting. And it's a good thing. Basically, it, it indicates that your body is burning fat. So that was the, the end product of that. <laughs> uh, so go find that video. Maybe I'll try and find it and link it below. So that's it with the cons. Now we are gonna go to the pros. And even though there are 12 cons and 12 pros, for me, the pros for sure outweigh the cons. Number one is that it is free. You don't have to buy anything to start fasting. You can start fasting today. You don't have to prep anything. You don't have to go out and buy special shakes or bars or, you know, calculate a meal plan or anything like that. You don't have to buy a coach or pay for coaching services, whatever. It is totally free. And I don't know of any other way of losing weight and getting healthier uh, that is absolutely free. And so that is amazing. Number two, uh, it can adapt to your life, okay? Fasting is totally flexible. You can figure out what works for you as far as what makes you feel the best and also what fits into your schedule and your family life, okay? For me, alternate day fasting fits perfectly because I am fasting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where we're all busy, we're all doing our own things. I am gonna tell you that my kids, I have four boys, have not even noticed that I've been fasting and I've been doing this for 15 months and I've done it sometimes where I've sat at the table with them and they're eating and I'm not. I guess they're just oblivious, but, uh, but this works so well for me in my life. And I can also choose, you know, when to adjust. I can take days off. I can fast days where I normally would not be fasting. I can switch up my schedule. It totally does adapt to your life, and I think that is one of the best things about fasting. Number three, and obviously the most obvious, is weight loss. Most people come to fasting for weight loss, and that is what you would call one of the side effects of, of fasting. Um, for some people, the weight loss is very quick and fast, and for some people, it is very, very slow. I've seen both. 
the good thing is that things are happening in your body, whether or not you are seeing it on the scale. Um, which brings me to number four, which is autophagy. Okay, so it is, there's no actual time or hour in which autophagy actually magically starts. It just depends on when your body hits that process, depending on, you know, your levels of protein and glycogen stores in your body. Um, but autophagy is basically like your cells recycling themselves. And it is a magical thing that is so healthy for us. We all experience autophagy at, at different points, but like fasting is one of the best ways to do that. And especially alternate day fasting, because you are going deeper into that fast. And so that is a huge benefit and a huge pro to alternate day fasting. Number five is appetite correction. For me, appetite correction means that you eat when you're hungry and you stop when you're full. Now, I did not have that before I started fasting. I would just keep eating and keep eating because I just was addicted to all these different things, right? Um, and even with a daily window, I did not really experience appetite correction. I was just kind of like shoveling food in. I don't think that I gave that uh, long enough to really experience it. I know that people do experience app appetite correction with a daily fasting window. Um, but for me, alternate day fasting was just one of those things where it was magical. Like on my fasting days, I do crave a lot of things. I'm thinking about food and, I, and I'm thinking the next day, like I'm going to eat all this. I'm going to eat this and this and this and this and this. But then something about sleeping. And then when I wake up, after I'm about to break my fast, I just don't feel that anymore. I don't feel all of those cravings. Now I can definitely hijack my appetite correction by the food choices that I make that day. And I've had that happen for sure. It's not perfect, but it is a huge, huge improvement over uh, what it was before. So number six is a full day of eating without guilt. Now, this is particularly applying to alternate, alternate day fasting versus a daily window or, um, or just not fasting at all. Okay, so like with alternate day fasting, I love the rhythm of not eating for a full day and then eating for a full day and not worrying about hours or restrictions or anything like that. I don't count calories. I don't count macros. I don't do anything like that. And I love that. And it is awesome. <laughs> Enough said, right? Also with that, with my particular method of 4-3 is that you have a whole weekend. So I eat Saturday and Sunday and I love that I just, you know, I can enjoy whatever we have going on. I can go out to dinner with my husband. I can go on a quick little trip or a day trip or something and not worry about what I'm eating or when I'm eating. I love having my weekends just open. Sundays, I do have a shorter window than Saturdays and that's just by choice. Um, some people do OMAD on Sundays when they do a 4-3. It really just depends on what works for you. Number eight is learning to process emotions and not turn to food. This is in contrast to what I was saying before about how you can't turn to food for comfort. And this is definitely a pro. You learn to process your emotions and to not rely on food to uh, get you through tough things. And that is a huge, huge benefit that I think cannot be discounted. Uh, number nine is better health. This has to be the best pro that there is, I think. And it really encompasses a lot of things. So I have heard just like a huge range of benefits that people have experienced from fasting. Um, the biggest one is type two diabetes. Um, 
I know that I heard a podcast with Megan Ramos, who I mentioned before works with Dr. Jason Fung, and they help people with type 2 diabetes. She said that their protocol that they put people on is three 36 to 42 hour fasts per week, which is what I do. Um, that's what they put their type 2 diabetic patients on, and within six weeks, they are off their meds. And that is amazing. And there are just so many, I couldn't even tell you all the different things that I've heard people say have improved for them. Their eyesight, psoriasis, um, arthritis, a lot of just inflammatory diseases uh, improve to completely heal. And it's amazing. Number 10 is food tastes better. I mean, when you don't eat for an entire day and then you get to eat again, I mean, the food is just amazing. It just helps you appreciate the taste and the flavor. Also, it may not be worth it. <laughs> you may realize that some things that you used to like or you used to think were amazing are just meh, not worth it. Um, and I think that's great. Like, I think it helps you to discern better what is worth eating and what's not. So that's a good thing. Uh, number 11 is that it makes you realize how strong you are. I mean, if you can go an entire day or more without eating food, like it gives you this kind of feeling of like having a superpower, honestly. It's like I could survive, you know, like if we didn't have food for some reason, like I could be okay with that because I'm used to it. And like that is just incredible. I never would have thought that I could go, you know, I've gone up to 84 hours um, as my longest fast without eating. And um, I know I could go longer than that too, if I had to. So like, that is just an incredible gift to have that empowering ability to not rely on food so much and know that you could survive and you could still function and thrive and help other people. I just think that, I just think that's awesome. Um, number 12 is that it creates boundaries. And I did a whole video on this a couple weeks ago. Um, just, I love how fasting is like that safety net for me around food that even if I know I, I might overdo it one day or two days or even for a week on my eating days, like the next day is a new day. I get to fast and start over and it really does like clear the it just clears it all away and like helps me to restart and i have appreciated that so much so much like that is one of the top benefits for me so i hope this has helped you and please do like leave any additional thoughts you have if i you feel like i've left something out and i appreciate you watching and i'll see you next time thanks bye, -bye.